Welcome to Brightly You Radiant Being, the show that wildly recognizes, encourages, and invests in the radiance we all carry so you can shine your brightest. Each episode, we share soul driven advice and topics to help you live more brightly in mind, body, and spirit. Through sharing our experiences, friendship, and passions, we hope to impact you to step more brightly into yourself, inch by inch. Hey, Amy. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. Uh, so I'm feeling ready to order takeout after we record this tonight. <laughs> uh, so our last show, episode 61, was on readiness. Mm -hmm. What are you ready to do tonight? Because you told, you told me before we started recording, when I pushed it back per usual, uh, you said you had a hard stop. And so I thought you had plans, which you do not to diminish what you're actually doing, but I thought yeah, you had to I be do. somewhere. But I what do are you doing? Because this is even better. This is even better. <laughs> I ended up because of this show we're just about to talk about, I ended up actually creating a mission statement, personal mission statement for myself a vision statement, a SWOT analysis. <laughs> and now I need to dig deeper into the SWOT analysis. Do you, do you have a board of directors meeting system. coming up? Like, are you about to ask for funding from Rick? <laughs> I'm telling you what, this is, well, we will get into it. And then your show, um, well, our my show. show, I know <laughs> our show on readiness. I was just like, oh, I have to add that into the mix here. So, so I that's it. what I'm doing tonight. I, I told Tracy, I go, I just need to be done by seven. She's like, Ooh, what are you doing? I'm like, well, <laughs> well, I'm nerding out in the LLC of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we, well, it's not a joke. I'm not going to say we joke about it. We call ourselves, I call you our chief enthusiasm officer. That's what CEO means at Brightly. Mm -hmm. And you say, I'm the chief brilliance officer. I think yes. I'm the SIBO. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you kind of think of your life, then, uh, are you the chief enthusiasm officer or do you have all the roles? Are you wearing multiple hats? So when I think about it, I'm wearing multiple hats, but I realize that there are perhaps inanimate or not, you know, things that could actually wear some of the hats, mm -hmm. but there are other people who would wear some of the hats. I just haven't like, that's why I have to be done by seven because I need to dig into this. And let me just, you have to everyone, clock in. I, I, I'm fully okay with the second job, Amy. This is my assignment to consider the podcast. Oh, no. I'm not clocking in because <laughs> I'm the owner. So <laughs> <laughs> you're never, you're never clocked out. Exactly. <laughs> so we wanted to do a show on control. And at first I was like, control, like what, what am I going to do with control? How am I going to talk about that? I can't talk about that. I need to talk about something different. This is my brain. Every show that ends up, I always say to Tracy, oh, I had such a hard time with this one. And then Tracy always says, you can always switch what you want to talk about. I'm like, I know, <laughs> but I feel like it's the ones that I have the hardest time with. They're the ones that I have to do in order to grow. Like literally, I think they are the ones that go, no, you're doing me and you're going to have revelation upon revelation upon revelation. So control, that sounds like mm, oh, I'm wait, control. Oh, wait, oh okay. Oh, wait. <laughs> the show talks to you like a helpful troll under a bridge. <laughs> yes. Like you're going to have revelation upon revelation upon revelation. <laughs> Make these wishes three and cast <laughs> a stone henceforth. <laughs> Hop backwards seven times and earth for nine hours. Listen, like, there's times that I wish that was actually how easy it was to get things done. <laughs> okay. You want a quest for every show. You don't, you don't want an interpersonal revelation. You want an actual quest with a map. <laughs> I do want an actual I want quest a map. With a oh map. my gosh, this is brilliant. Yes. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that. Next episode, questing. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. It was really funny to me when we uh, logged in to do our pre-show chat and you said the show is about control uh because I don't remember talking about that I'm not saying it wasn't on control I'm just mm -hmm. saying like 
that doesn't seem like an us episode. What was no. it even originally going to be born from? Well, it was it was going to be born from the tarot card, the emperor, mm. and the same place where readiness was born from, because he's got his armor on underneath his robes, right? And the emperor is very much in control of himself and his empire. And he's also the commander, right? Mm. Or he was the commander. So we Ooh. were going to do a show on command and control. My LLC, I'm going to be the commander. Okay, <laughs> I my like life. that. Right, so, that's yeah. a quote, commander of the seat, your soul, or something like admiral that. of your soul. Okay, I'm yeah. detracting. Okay, so anyway, you're fine. So, so, so you were told a revelation upon revelation upon revelation. Yes. and then you you went forth and you created a to do list, which well, I actually. You. Actually, what I went forth and did was listen to the leadership episode 60 three times. And <laughs> I'm not kidding you. All of us, and that's where the revelations came from, was from our own show. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, oh, because in episode 60, if you haven't listened to it, we actually, so it's called leader basically being the leader of your life, right? But we went down this, com or what we thought was a comedic ro road about being the CEO and you're the human resources and are you retaining friends and Did attracting Did you just tell me I'm talent. not funny? <laughs> we thought we went comedic or you just were like, it was, it was actually brilliant. I said it was comedic oh, road. Okay. And, and then I said, or we thought it was. Okay, I said, okay. we thought. <laughs> Excellent. Goodness gracious, you know, I think you're brilliant and hilarious. <laughs> so, with, and then it, during that episode, Tracy, you said, oh, you look like you want to do another show on this. And me hearing that, listening to the show, I went, oh, I do want to do a, another show on this. And I'm going to with the control show. And here's the whole thing. Okay. Not the whole thing, but... If, okay, if we want to feel like going back to leadership and even the readiness episode, if we want to feel like we do have control over our day, like over our life, why don't we actually treat our life like a business? Why don't we do that? And I think also... I think part of the problem might be that if we actually did try and take control, then we'd have to take responsibility. And then we would actually have to be responsible for how our day turned out. If we achieved goals, uh, you know, there is an, a lot of responsibility in that, right? But so I decided to literally, I, again, I'm not kidding when I said I listened to this episode so many times. So I thought, okay, let's do it. Let's be the CEO of our life, right? Let's do a SWOT analysis, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Let's look at the resources you do have. Let's, you know, and you did an excellent, you actually went through like, here's your resources, time, energy, healthy diet, good sleep hygiene. Like you went through a bunch of them. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to need a mission statement before I can do those other things. Mm. I need a mission statement. So a mission statement to me is kind of like when you're writing a book, if you can write your pitch, like your elevator pitch, mm -hmm. that really um, focuses you in on what your book is about, right? Yeah. And it keeps you focused. So for for a business, kind of like the, um, like if let's say you wanted uh, like a template for it, mm -hmm. the value you create, who you create it for and the expected outcome and, and the less words you can use. So whether it's a single sentence or a paragraph, kind of up to you. But how can you get that mm -hmm. across to really highlight what your mission in life is or your mission as a business? So mine isn't quite like that. It doesn't have to be, but that's typically for a business. That's the breakdown. Yes. Yeah. And I even did look up like how to create a personal mission statement. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, folks, 
there are plenty of templates and mission oh, yeah. statement generators and all kinds of things out there. Can I share so with you one of my favorite ones? Yeah. So Maya Angelou, her uh, a sample mission statement that she's given in the past is, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. Wow. I love that. I really do love that. I'm also just going to share with people that it's overwhelming when you try to think of a mission statement because all the things like you think, well, I need to get this in there and I need to get that in there and how I show up and my family and this and blah, 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 blah. So I literally like at, I finally had to take a 15 minute walk, hmm. not listen to the podcast for the fourth time. I just had to take a walk and quiet everything down. So while I was walking, all of a sudden, this is what came into my head. Um, intention, brave, creativity, and joy. Those four words. And it was just like that. It was just like intention, bravery, creativity, joy. So I went, okay, that's where I'm going to start. Like, that's where I'll start is with those four words. But then I still did do the, the, the online, the template oh, sure. generator thing. And it was clunky and I rewrote it and rewrote it and rewrote it. And I finally got it to a point where it felt right. And then I could write the vision statement. And then I went back and did the SWOT analysis, but I'm going to, is it okay if I read my mission statement? Is it? Do you want to? <laughs> of course it is. I do. And, and just so everyone knows it could change. That's the beauty of writing. Your That's what I was just going to say. Statement. I did mine in 2014. You did. I did. You still have yours. Do you I know do. It? So while you share yours, I'll dig mine out while I listen. Okay. Um, so you'll see okay. me go off camera if you watch online, but I will say the last time I read it, uh, during the pandemic when I was like, okay, what the future is different now. And what are your goals and what's your life and who do you want to be? And I was like, oh, I have a mission statement. I'll start there. Right. Yeah. Because your mission statement is literally why you exist. And so that's why probably it felt overwhelming because as a person, it feels so permanent to write yes. that, but that yes. evolves and changes. Whereas a business, if it's going to evolve, there has to be like a return on investment, right? There has to be a fiscal responsibly reason why you're changing and pivoting. Mm -hmm. So for me, I read it and I was all excited. Like I've already done the work and I read it and was like, oh, this is not you. <laughs> this is no <laughs> longer you. Yeah. And I love that you aspired to be this, but there we took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, why don't you go ahead and share yours and I'll grab my journal. Yeah. Um, so my mission is to live each day with intention through a commitment to hold in my heart, kindness, love, and joy to act with bravery to create more than I consume, and to always leave room for magic. So I felt like the things that I wrote in here, so I didn't go specific, like to write, you know, my, my mission, bestseller. To write the next yeah. bestseller, right? It's just basically writing ha is an act of bravery for me. And it's also creation. And it's things like that, but bravery encompasses so many more things in my life, like how I speak with to people, if I um, show up in an activism role, um, things like that. Uh, the kindness, love, and joy is is how I try to show up for my family and friends and colleagues and anyone in my community. And so, and then always leave room for magic is just. It's sort of now reminding me of your, if you're, if you, if you are ready, you never have to get ready. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, so, I, cause you said, did you say earlier, um, I, I, you intend to read this in the morning? Yes. Like as you is, start your day. This is, this is my, my intention is this is my day to day life. Mm -hmm. This is the day to day life. And then my vision is to inspire my family, friends, and community to live a life of intention and magic. That's my vision. I love that. Yeah. So vision is typically your desired end state. Who do you mm -hmm. want to go? Where do you, uh, or who do you want to be and where do you want to go? 
um, your mission, I love yours because it also really highlights your values. So if you're having trouble coming up with this and some of the worksheets may or may not include this, but like just list out your values. We even did it for the show. We created a mission yeah. and a statement for the show. I think some um, of these are our values of the show. <laughs> yes, I would hope so. Yeah. Um, did you find yours? I did. Um, okay. Back in my bullet journal days. I so love it. You see my, uh, my attempts at uh, making the ribbons. Um, okay. So here's mine. Uh, my mission in life is to live a life of intention as creatively, humbly, and as conscientiously responsible as possible, and to do so passionately supporting and encouraging each individual's potential and worth by displaying grace, joy, and wit. Okay. I love that one too. And I feel like we have some similarities, even though that one was your 2014 self. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So are you going to change yours? I mean, there's nothing bad about it, mm -hmm. but if, if I read this speak to you, yeah. If I were to read this every morning, I'd feel bad about the actions I take and not just saying like the lazy ones, but just like the direction I'm choosing oh. not to go in. Right. Okay. Um, okay. And so I have to think about it. Cause back then I was, um, trying to go towards veganism, both in diet and lifestyle. I was trying to, I was really diving into the eco lifestyle stuff. And, and now a lot of that is still a part of my life, but it's not the focus anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me, I have to kind of start with that desired end state again. And, you know, I, I've, talked about this in the readiness show and a couple others. I typically don't really go more than a year out in life, but then I get frustrated that I don't have, you know, that I'm not in certain places when I get a year further in life. And it's like, well, you have to plan and work towards the five and 10 year goals. So I, I think I have to figure out what those outcomes are to yeah. get there because yeah, because my vision, I think this is what didn't resonate the most. So the end of my vision statement is a focus on advocacy. Oh, um, and okay. things like that. And, and again, not that I don't do that, but I was going to go on a much different career path. I wanted to join the Peace Corps. Like yeah. I just, the, the government shut down and I just, <laughs> I had to make some changes. Um, and now I like where I am. Like it all happened for mm -hmm. a reason. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I have to figure out the desired end state before I can craft what the vision and the mission are. Um, but I feel like my values are still the same. So I still feel like mm -hmm. I have that good starting off point. It's just what, when I put them all together, you know, and Captain yeah. Planet comes out, what does it look like? Um, yeah. yeah. And honestly, since this was, you know, a very new thing for me, my mission statement could very well change just as I'm working more on this this week, because I do want to focus on this not just tonight, but this week. And I also want to like, there's, there's some things that I want to dig into besides like that, the SWOT analysis. I I've got it. I've got it on the board behind me. My, <laughs> Your CEO yeah. chart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And one thing that I realized that I do need to dig into some things are like, I listed it as costs expenses, but really what I meant was those day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week tasks that don't feel like they're moving you anywhere, but that still need to get done. And now when I, when I, after listening to the, to, after being a part of the readiness show, it's your overhead. There might be a way to, um, make those more cost efficient <laughs> to be ready, you know, with those. But I also don't want to just be like, your day is your own and you're in control when actually a big chunk of our day, someone else might be in control, whether it's the job you work at. Um, if you have children, uh, those responsibilities, if you're a caregiver for, um, aging parents, like you don't have complete control over your whole entire day, but this is a way to figure out how to get some control for the part of your day that you do have control over. How many times yeah. can I say control in a sense? So I, I liked earlier, uh, I was going to stop you when you said it, but uh, there was something you said where I was like, control makes so much sense as, as a, a name for this episode or for a topic. Um, because when you're the CEO, 
Um, oh, you were talking about how um, a lot of people don't want to think of themselves as a business. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think when you phrase it in terms of control, I think that's why, because typically most people aren't in control when they're at work, when they're at a business, right? Right. right. And so if you view yourself as a business and you don't view yourself as in control when you're in a business environment, you're not going to like this analogy or this exercise. But if you view this as taking control, that I am the business, I am in charge, I am the decision maker, a lot of things fall into place and it gets a lot more yeah. exciting. And so when you have those moments, because even business owners have those moments where a vendor does something wrong, where a customer has a weird request, right? Like your CEO's life is not perfect. Um, There's a lot they have to deal with that they keep (laughs) off the plates of everybody else. But it's a way of when you have those moments where you can recenter, you have somewhere to go back to. Mm -hmm. And I used my mission statement and my vision statement for big decision making because I was at a crossroads. I was at a point where I had just dropped out of college and I had left my job and was completely changing career paths. And like I said, I was even considering the Peace Corps and just like I had all these opportunities in front of me. I was a lot more ambitious at that time. And this was a guide, right? It was a guiding post Mm -hmm. where I was able to center. It reminded me of my most important values and where I wanted to go. And that made decision making easier at a time when I had a lot of decision fatigue, which it sounds like if you're at that point in your life, when so many people you have to react to, you're going to have decision fatigue. And doing this work up front, being ready for these moments will help you make the good choices or the choices that help you further along to that outcome, that desired end state. Absolutely. And I feel like not only the big decisions, but even those little decisions throughout the day, this can help you. Another thing that I just wanted to talk about with the company, running a company, is that you do have support when you run a company, unless you're, you know, a solo entrepreneur, but even then you could hire out certain aspects of it. And you can network and have support group. Like there's, yeah. And friends and family can be your support. But then I also want you to remember that you also have stakeholders. And so consider your actions can affect your stakeholders. And so for me, I consider my stakeholders, not only future me, not only perhaps my husband, my children, my granddaughter, but I also consider them. I looked ahead, you guys. This is great. Everybody (laughs) listen up. If you weren't paying attention, if you were driving, if you were working, this is a drum roll here. My stakeholders are my guides, my angels, my ancestors. And I don't want to let them down. You have a board. I love that. (laughs) Yes. And listen, lately, some people have been very noisy (laughs) at three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what is happening? Okay, fine. (laughs) I absolutely love that because your stakeholders... Like, let's say, let's say I wasn't the CEO, right? Like at my company, I'm four or five down from the top and, and, and not to say I'm like, that's just who I report to. So I have vision of them, but I'm, 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 I'm a worker bee. Um, but so for me, I have stakeholders who I absolutely owe things to and have a responsibility to, but their responsibility to me is to get me the resources and support I need and to protect me if something goes wrong, that isn't, you know, to you protect your team, right. And you stand up for your team and you support and lift up and elevate your team and give your team credit. So what I love about this is your guides and your angels and your ancestors. It's not just who you report to They're Who's going to protect you. There's who's going to feed you support. There's who's going to be cheering you on because they ultimately want and need you to succeed too. Whereas I think sometimes when you listed, you know, like uh, a partner or a spouse and children, some of that can feel overwhelming because it are, it's real people with real expectations and real things you have to do. But when it's your guides and your angels and your ancestors, you can scream into the void into your car and be like, show me a sign. And then a license plate comes on and you're back on track, right? Like, you just like... <laughs> <laughs> Which listen to my signs episode. If you do that a little too much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just, that's so, I absolutely love it that your guides, your angels and your ancestors are your stakeholders. I'm going to be viewing them as the board and I'm the chairman of the board. I gotta, I gotta go in and, and, and present to them. Uh, they got to well, vote like, on things. <laughs> you know, 
what I loved about that too. I realized that when I was like, I, I'm writing my mind map and then I'm like stakeholders. And then I'm thinking, well, who would your stakeholders be? And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> that's who the stakeholders are. But then that also gave it, you know, it, it, because I think sometimes, especially with the things we talk about, we're not exactly, we're not a business podcast, right? <laughs> I mean, we delve much more. Of course, we're, we're talking about, you know, like being successful in day-to-day life, but we also talk about opening yourself up to a more spiritual way of living and cyclical way of living. And so, especially when you think about being the CEO, well, if your stakeholder is your ancestors or your spirit guides, that's going to just kind of have a little different feel to it, right? I can wear a flowy dress now to the board well, meetings. Talk about making sure magic is in your life. <laughs> it's right? just like this aura around your board when you go to present. <laughs> I but can't I- wait for the first board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the other thing I love about thinking of yourself or your life as a business is I think that changes how you communicate right? Like if you, yeah. you, you know, you wouldn't tell the CEO, sorry, I'm sleeping in today, right? Like you wouldn't tell them, you know, no, I'm not going to do this, right? You would have that accountability piece that you're talking about right. earlier. Um, that sometimes can be scary, but now it's in this, it's reframed in this way that it's to achieve this mission, this amazing mission, right? If you don't, if you work for a company and you either don't know, or don't support their mission, your work can get so much better. If you find one that you do, um, <sighs> Yeah. Right. So make sure that what this is, it's not something that's going to demotivate you because it's going to stress you out and shame you. And the goals are too big. Make Mm -hmm. sure that when you read it, you get excited and you're happy and you just want to talk to everybody about your place of business, right? Like you want to recruit people to it. Um, I love it so much. This is great. I can't wait to see what what you do for your homework tonight. (laughs) Well, okay. I'm just going to tell everyone when I, you know, so I get the mission statement written. I get the vision statement written. And then I think now it'll be so much easier to do the SWOT analysis, right? So I'm going to dig into the SWOT analysis. So once again, all of a sudden I'm like, strengths, weaknesses. What? I'm overwhelmed. I'm an immediate... It state of overwhelm because I just don't know where to start. So where does, you know, where does a business minded strategic person start with their tarot deck? That's where. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what I did friends. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm just picturing rolling up to some of my past places of business and being like, you know what? Like, the, we've been really contentious on this one topic. I think we need to consult the Oracle. Just <laughs> no, give me seriously. sage the conference room. <laughs> oh, God. I have worked places where like people have talked about the energy was heavy and then they've come back Monday and have been like, oh, this feels so much better. And I was just like, yeah, doesn't it smell good? Like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> Tracy, yes, who I in have actually done summer. that. I have done that to one office. Um, uh, yes. I, I yes. even bought a, a spray, a sage spray. That's what I did. Portable. Yeah. Yes. And because you didn't want to set a place on fire, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I literally did. I pulled cards. And what that did is, first of all, it focused me. Um, I initially was just going to pull three cards for each one. And then like a fourth one came out for something. And then I did four for all of them. And even ones where I was like, why would that be a weakness? Right? Like uh, uh, there was just some things. I got the 10 of pentacles, which is a super abundant card. Very business oriented. But I got it for a weakness. And for me, once I dug into it, I went, oh, it's my money story. It's my relationship to money. Mm -hmm. And then for a potential threat, I'm not going to go through all the cards, but for threat, one of the cards I got was the moon card. Well, Tracy and I both love the moon card. It's like, Ooh, mystery. Ooh, wild side. Ooh, all these things. Shiny. But as I looked at the moon card, I went, Oh, a threat is not doing shadow work not continuing to do shadow work. So it got me to think deeper than I think 
I don't think I would have come up with shadow work as a threat if I hadn't done the tarot cards. Well, like, and, and what I, so what came up for me for the moon, when you said that, that I think kind of mm -hmm. goes, you just took it the step deeper to get to the point, but the unknown unknowns and the known unknowns are that the biggest threat. threat to something yes. like this. That's and so right. by doing the shadow work, mm -hmm. you can overcome that threat and turn them into opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, it was really interesting. Um, well, and what a great use of tarot for reflective <laughs> purposes, because you can always draw a card and if it's a resounding no, and you don't agree with it, that tells you something you needed to know, right? Like yeah. not knowing. So like in that instance too, if you were like the 10 of pentacles, blah, 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 blah. And you had all these great reasons and it wasn't defensiveness. It could have been like, oh, a strength of mine is I want to make money. Right. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. You know, so it mm -hmm. all depends on the self-awareness you, you bring to this yeah. and how much you reflect on it. Um, I love where you went with the moon card. And that also well, you're using the SWAT, not just to identify these things, but it sounds like you're also coming up with actions then based on what comes up. Yes. In the SWAT. And that's something. So I've come up with some actions for them, but I have to dig deeper, which is another part of my evening. And so <laughs> now I want to do this. Now I might do this. I feel like th that this whole thing could be used. Like even if you wanted say a mission statement, say you were going back to school and you just developed a mission statement, just specific to like going back to school, right? It doesn't have to be for your whole life. It could be like a mission statement for, from this day forward, how I want to treat people. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you I've, there's just, some people that use it, um, uh, for families. So they come up with it together so that they have a shared mission perfect. and vision yes. in life and stuff that also helps with their decision-making and money spending. And especially yeah. if you're a new couple, that's where I got Gosh. the initial idea to do my own mission statement is I was in counseling psychology and I think some prepare and rich or some other worksheet or something like that was like a, a mm -hmm. pre marriage counseling kind of idea of like, have you talked about if you have the same desired end state, do you have a mission statement for your, for your union, for your marriage? And it sounds really weird to do it like that, but couples like get them painted or calligraphied all beautiful and they frame them in their homes. And then you can go back to it. I mean, I feel like that is a beautiful way to use a mission statement, especially if you framed it, especially if you're having a really hard day with your partner Oh yeah, and you're having a fight. And then you look at that mission statement and that's a way to just kind of regroup, come back at it together or an opening for, you know, a, uh, an apology or well, how to move forward. It's not overly idealistic because it's something you hopefully drafted together and well, that right. decisions were made and it was values based. Whereas I feel like sometimes in a fight when they're like, oh, we're just doing this for love. Uh, uh, honey, get more concrete than that. In this moment, I do not love you very much. <laughs> like, so That's for right. me, for, for the personal mission statements, um, I, as with most things, I, I didn't want to like put it too publicly, uh, in my space. Cause it was a shared space, but I put it as the background on my, my computers. So I had one for my career for work yeah. and I had one for home. And so I created a beautiful like background desktop picture with it on it. And then that way I didn't have to worry about like, did I think to open my notebook, my journal? and reread it in the morning or uh, I didn't, I don't you want to what? have phone time in the morning. I don't want to have to look at my phone. So this way it was as I started my work day. Yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, we love Canva. We love to mm. use Canva and there's so many free templates there. It would just be a beautiful way that you could create a mission statement, put it on this beautiful template, Canva template, print it out, frame it. There you go. You've got your you got piece it. of art. I'm doing it. I love it. <laughs> I knew you were going to, <laughs> and I just want to share with people like, well, you know, I shouldn't say it's hard. Maybe it was just hard for me to do it. It takes effort. It and does honesty. take effort and, and it takes rewrites and, and it honesty. takes knowing what you want and, and your values. So just remember it's worth it. Oh, That's just well, what I think. well, if you and your soul found this episode worth it, please share it with a friend. And if you have time, give us some love on your preferred platform with a rate review and subscribe. You can also reach out to us via Instagram and YouTube under the brightly podcast or via email at brightlypodcast at gmail.com. And we hope you have a bright and beautiful day.